Today we're going through on how to make mountain bike tire sealant, road bike tire sealant, cycle cross tire sealant, all the tire sealants. Here it is. Uh, these days, I think pretty much everyone is running tubeless tires, at least mountain biking, and if you're not, probably should be. And I'm also running them on the road, and I know that's it's not exactly what everybody's doing these days, but I think it's just trending that way, and honestly, it's pretty nice to have that uh, peace of mind that if you do get a puncture, most likely the sealant will fix your flat, um, and then you just add a little bit of air, it might burp a little bit, or, you know, squirt a little bit of the sealant out, but you don't always have to replace an inner tube. You're also obviously gonna uh, lighten your rotational weight a lot, which makes a big difference in your accelerations. So all in all, tire sealant's kind of the way to go, tubeless is the way to go, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Uh, it's a pretty simple recipe. Uh, it's gonna use one part ammonia, two parts liquid latex. This is probably the most important part. There's a bunch of different brands out there. This is one that's kind of more for Halloween type stuff, like making masks and things like that. Um, but there's also ones you can get at craft stores, um, different things. Uh, but I'll link that in the description. Next, we have two parts antifreeze, distilled water, four parts distilled water, and then most people like to use something, including myself, so that you have something that clogs the hole that kind of, um, it adds like some texture to your liquid. So I'm actually using dog hair, but some people like to use uh, cornmeal or glitter is another one that people use. I don't like glitter because I don't want to get glitter all over the trails or all over the road. Cornmeal I think is fine, but I've got two dogs, so why not use dog fur? I think the easiest way to do this is just to pick, a, pick an amount you want to do and then mix it in like a gallon jug or something that has a screw on top or some sort of top so that you can just shake it up after. I am going to do just 100 milliliters of ammonia. Pour it in. A funnel would be nice, but I'll have one of those right here, so. Smells so good. Two parts liquid latex, so 200 milliliters of liquid latex. Probably should have done the liquid latex first so that when I measure it out, it actually, um, you know, comes out of my measuring container. So I would recommend doing this first, actually. Try not to spill it, because this stuff's kind of expensive. Um, I got this bottle on Amazon. I think it was about 12 bucks for a pint. Uh, if you get it at a craft store at full price, it's something more like 20 bucks. Um, and that stuff might be a little bit better, but to be honest, I haven't used that kind, so I can't tell you. Okay, next, gotta get my antifreeze, two parts antifreeze. I'm gonna do this in two 100 milliliters so that I can try to shake out this latex a little bit. Just trying to trying to get it all out. Is that four parts distilled water? And again, I'm going to do this in a couple. Probably do it in two times two two hundred milliliters for me. And the liquid latex on its own looks pretty much like the namesake for tire sealant stands or something like that you might know okay that's four parts water and then the last part 
is your dog hair, dog fur, cornmeal, glitter, or whatever else you throw in there. I'm gonna collect some dog fur right now. Look at that stuff. Perfect for sealing tires. And I don't have a recommended amount. I've just got a handful of dog hair, dog fur. Um, I think you'd probably want like two tablespoons or two teaspoons, yeah, two teaspoons of cornmeal if you decide to go that route. Um, but one handful. Kind of shove it in there. Get the rest of the liquid latex in, in there. Definitely have a rag nearby. Okay. Once you got that all in there, give it a good shake. Okay, you can see, kind of, took on the color of the latex, it's white. You can see the dog fur in there. And you're ready to go. So depending on your tire size, you need to determine how much sealant you're gonna use. Um, for a 29er mountain bike tire, you're typically gonna want like 100 milliliters or so. It's three or four ounces, give or take. And in a road tire, 700 cc, you're probably gonna want something like 60 to 75 milliliters or two, two and a half ounces. Um, I've got this road wheel right here that I'm filling right now. So I am going to put in about 60 to 70 milliliters of this stuff. And this should stay um, liquidy and just roll around in your tire as your tire rotates. Um, and then obviously as your tire rotates, if you get a puncture, it continues to roll around until it hits that puncture, then explodes out, and hopefully the dog hair and liquid latex start to seal that before you go flat. Um, I like to put it in on the bottom, my stems up here, I like to put it down here, and then seal the tire up after. This part's always kind of messy, unfortunately. Rotate it around, give it a little rotation. Close up your rim, or close up your tire. Usually, if you spill a little bit of this on your wheel, it makes it easier to slip the tire on. So that's kind of nice, I guess. Once you get that on, inflate your tire. Once you're partially inflated or totally inflated, kind of shake it up, get that sealant all over the place. When you're inflating, you want to seat your tire in the wheel itself, so in the channels on the sides of the wheel, um, which for me, I do it the lazy way. I take the stem out of the Presta valve um, with a tool like this, and then just use the air compressor, regulated down to like 100 PSI. Not recommended by any tire company. Um, don't do that, don't do that at all. And then after you uh, get the tire seated, put the valve stem back in and hand inflate the rest of the way to whatever pressure you like to ride at. I guess it totally depends on the conditions, um, your tire size and everything else. So yeah. Get out there and ride. Cheers.